Hey, welcome back everybody. It's Wojo and we're going to look at one more algebra lesson on solving quadratics today. Uh, so we have uh, a couple weeks where we've done solving quadratics. The uh, first week we solved, we solved by factoring uh, to figure out what the x was. Uh, today we're not going to need to factor to solve these quadratics. Uh, this method will work if there's only an x squared term in the problem, but no single x term. So you notice there's 4x squared, but there's no 9x or 7x, there's just an x squared. And so this method is really great. It takes us back to our solving roots. Uh, and uh, almost all students like this because it goes right kind of back to what they're used to uh, in solving. So a couple things to remember, we're trying to get, uh, today we're going to be trying to get x by itself using our old solving method. And we can do that because there's only an x in one spot, there's not an x somewhere else. Um, just a thing to remember, if it's an x squared or a quadratic, we should expect up to two answers. And so today we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look for two possible answers for that 4 times something to the second power minus 9 would give me 7. <clears throat> and so we're just going to get right into it. Uh, today what I want you to think is I want you to go back to our old um, way of solving and just start thinking, well, what's bothering the x and what's farthest away? Can I get rid of it and move it to the other side? And so that same idea that we talked about when we solved just um, x to the first powers or linear equations works here. So here the equal sign is right there. So we don't care about anything past the equal sign. And we have three things bothering the x. And that's important to notice there's three things. There's the minus 9. There's the times 4. But then there's also this to the second power squared. So we're going to have to get rid of all three things. Um, we know how to get rid of minus 9s. We add 9. We know how to get rid of times 4s. We divide by 4. What we're going to learn today is to get rid of a squared, we can just take the square root of both sides and we can get an answer um, and get x by itself. So to start, we're going to start farthest away from the x. That's going to be the minus 9. To undo the minus 9, we're just going to add 9 because negative 9 plus 9 is 0, so we can just kind of ignore it. Uh, to keep everything equal, using that additive property of equality, we're going to add 9 to the other side. Uh, 7 plus 9 is 16, we can just bring that down. 9's canceled out, and we have a 4 times x squared equals 16. Now we're just going to keep working our way down, uh, trying to get x by itself. Now farther away from the x is not the squared, but the times 4. Squared is probably closest to the x at this point. <clears throat> and so to get rid of a times 4, we're going to divide by 4. So we're going to take both sides, divide it by 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 1 times x squared is just x squared, so we ignore it. And 16 divided by 4 is 4. Now at this point, some students might want to stop. It kind of looks like x is by itself. But there's one more thing that we have to get rid of to get x by itself, and that's the squared. Now in math, to undo a squared, we're going to take this square root symbol to both sides. And whatever I do to one side, I'm going to do to the other. Now the square root of x squared is basically saying, well, what times itself would give me x squared? And the answer to that is x. On this side, we're asked, what times itself gives us 4? Now if you type the square root of 4 in your calculator, you would get 2. But here's where our second answer comes in. There's actually one other number multiplied by itself that gives you 4. I'll give you guys a second to see if you can think of it. We know 2 times 2 is 4. What else times itself is 4? You can't use 1 times 4 because it's not something times itself. Hopefully you've kind of thought about it, but there is another number. And it's negative 2. What's negative 2 times negative 2? It is also a positive 4. So we take the square root of 4 here. We have to kind of think to ourselves, well, there's probably two possible answers. Sometimes they'll say x equals 2 or x equals negative 2 because it could be either one. And sometimes they use this symbol here that looks like a plus with a minus right underneath it, just saying it could be positive or negative 2. You'll see it both ways, but our answers are either 2 or negative 2, and you can write it with the plus or minus sign if you like. So hopefully today's solving uh, makes a little bit more sense because it looks more like what you're used to. We want to get x by itself. So going back, here it is. Farthest away is the minus 9. So we added uh, 9 to both sides. Then farthest away was the times 4, so we divided by 4. And then the new thing today, the new part, is how do we get rid of an x squared if that's the only thing bothering the x? 
we square root it. And if you're not sure how to square root, your calculators will do it. The calculator on the Chromebook will do a square root. You can even ask Alexa or you know, Siri and all those things. They'll do square roots for you too. Um, but you can just do it. It's not always going to be a, a nice number. Sometimes it'll be a decimal answer and that's okay. All right, let's take a look at uh, one more just to make sure you guys see one um, that might be a little bit different. If we asked you to solve, whoa, example two, solve negative 22 equals 5 minus 3x squared. Negative 22 equals 5 minus 3x squared. And we took a look at that. We're going to do it the same way. We're going to solve uh, by taking roots. Now, the reason I know I can take roots is if I look, there's an x here, but there's no other x's anywhere else. So I can get x by itself. It's really important to know, though, that that only works if there's an x squared and no other x's. If there's another x, then we're going to have to use a different way to solve it. So in this one, we're going to start farthest away from the x. We have three things bothering it. We have this positive 5 out front, because remember, this minus sign belongs to the 3, or a negative 3 times x squared, and we have this squared. So farthest away is the 5. How do we get rid of a positive 5? We just undo it by subtracting 5. So we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. That's going to cancel out or give me 0. Negative 22 minus 5. Again, you can use a calculator for these. That's fine is negative 27. And then don't forget, who does this minus sign belong to? It belongs to the 3, so bring it down when you're solving. Negative 3x squared. And then we're just going to keep going to get x by itself. So just every time you get a step done, just think, well, this is a brand new step. Let's just start over. Who's bothering the x now? Is it the times negative 3, or is it the squared? Well, they're both bothering the x. Which one's farthest away? The negative 3 is least connected. So we're going to get rid of it by dividing. Now remember, even though it's a negative 3, you might be tempted to add it. But how is that negative 3 connected to the x? If you read it, does negative 3x squared read negative 3 plus x squared or negative 3 times? When they're smushed together, it means times. So how do we get rid of multiplication? We divide. So we're going to divide by negative 3. That gives me 1 on this side, so just the x squared comes down. And on the left side, negative 27 divided by negative 3 is a positive 9. So on this side, we have a positive 9. And then you just got to ask yourself, are we done? And how do you know when you're done? You're done when x is completely by itself, isolated on its side of the equal sign. There's still something bothering the x, and that's the squared. And so if we want to get rid of the squared, our new learning is to square root both sides. So we're just going to square root both sides. Square root of 9. So what times itself gives me 9? And this is where you got to be kind of careful. There's actually two numbers. 3 times 3 gives me 9. So I could get 3 is equal to x. Or what's the other number times itself that gives you 9? It's always going to be the opposite. So it's 3 times 3 is 9 or negative 3 times negative 3. So, or I could get... Um, negative 3 equals x. Now, you might want to rewrite it as x equals 3 or x equals negative 3. You could even rewrite it as x could equal plus or minus 3. Any of these answers work. They're all the same. They're just different ways of representing that right answer. But in the end, what we found is the x value that would go in here to make this true would, could either be a positive 3 or a negative 3. Now, as a reminder, you can check any one of these solvings by plugging it back in. If I took 3 and plugged it back in here, 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times 9 is negative 27. 5 minus 27 would give me negative 22. And I could do the same thing for the negative 3. Um, so I hope that this week you guys are able to take a look at solving uh, by taking square roots. You get out the pen and paper, the pencil paper, whatever you guys use, and you try these problems out. These are ones that you might need to write out. I don't think they're necessarily ones you can do in your head. Uh, some of you are going to be able to do these mentally, but for most of, the, of you, uh, we hope that you get your paper pencil out and try some of these, and it'll help you uh, with all of your solving skills, even the ones we learned first semester. Uh, so hopefully uh, it's all good and you guys have success. If you have questions, of course, just let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Thanks a lot for sticking around. Talk to you guys later.